Love to the massive man, Alcro. This is Junior Tuts. I just want to say respect to all of the music, music coast fans. You see me, I say? I'm a reggae artist from the Bay Area. And uh, I sing ska, Afro beats, hip hop, and up tempo dance music. Bang, it's my pleasure to be here. Massive up. So, how is alternating between living in the U.S. and Jamaica influenced your musical style and the themes that you explore in your songs? Uh, it's, it's a great influence. Um, um, I incorporate hip hop into my music. Uh, my, my foundation, the original music is ska for me, for my dad. My dad's a ska father, so I do ska music from the 60s, 70s, up to the now time uh, with hip hop, so I can uh, communicate with the audiences in America and around the world. You know, because when you speak people language, they like that, you know? Like when people speak Patois, Jamaicans like that, so I know that people around the world like it when we speak hip hop or Afrobeat and so on and so forth. And what lessons did you learn from your father uh, that you carry forward in your music career today? Uh, you gotta be strong, you gotta believe in yourself and uh, you gotta believe in the most high and you gotta be very disciplined and um, you gotta work right and you gotta uh, be, be, be uh, levicated to what you're doing uh, practice makes perfect. So, you know, he was a very hardworking artist and a great dad and a great human being. So he influenced me in every way to be what I am doing today, to carry the legacy and to represent the family. And um, every time I perform, he's, he's with me. I can feel him and I know he's proud. inspiration and the process behind your remake of Sweet and Dandy and what it means to you personally? My dad asked me to do that song and um, we were getting ready to work on a lot of music together and that was right uh, like two weeks before he, he got sick and, and transcend. So I'm very proud of that work and I performed that song when I'm when I'm performing. Uh, Sweet and Dandy was one of my dad's uh, hit songs and uh, it's a crowd favorite. And your music often addresses social issues. What current events or social themes are you most passionate about addressing in your upcoming work? Um, well, you know, there's, uh, we have too much violence, too much crime, um, and too much poverty, and too much drug addiction. Um, and, um, those are some of the things that, that I address. Um, you know, I'm an advocate for eating healthy, exercising, and uh, keeping your body oxygenated with fresh food and balance it out with cooked food and different kind of stuff. So yeah, I'm advocating for all those things right now in my music and in real life. How do you approach the songwriting and recording process, especially when collaborating with artists from different cultural backgrounds? Um, like, I don't try to pressure the process. Like, if I'm working on a song, I will listen to the instruments um, and um, in the morning and before I go to bed and then forget about it. And then while I'm going about my business, the words will just come to me. And I'll, write, I'll start to write them down as fast as I can. And then uh, forget about it again, listen to the rhythm, and then the words will come to me and then I'll write them down as fast as possible. So it's a great process and uh, I just, you have to trust the process. That's kind of how I do it. Um, and then when I work with other artists, it's pretty much the same because I don't try to rush the process and force it. I just try to make sure it's, it's divine. When the music is divine, then, excuse me, the words, the words must be divine and, the, and the, um, the harmony and the chorus. So I just try to be patient with everything and let it come to me instead of pressuring it too much. How do your missions, your side hustles, how do they in, in, 
integrate with your musical endeavors and your special causes that you've been pushing? I'm a member of the Ethiopian World Federation and I'm also we're, I'm, I'm also uh, an ambassador in the streets in Oakland, the Bay Area, where there's a lot of uh, crime and um, disorientation going on. So I'm working in the streets every day, doing stuff like security, feeding people, um, just talking to the youths, and doing lots of free events and uh, performing at um, different juvenile halls and working with different nonprofit organizations. And, um, and bringing people together, you know, from the Caribbean to Africa to Trinidad, Virgin Islands, UK. I'm working with an uh, international group of people as, work as, as well as with local people, you know what I mean? So I'm always working. And have you been all over the world and been to so many festivals? Is there any like memorable festivals that have you done already that have just like really hold true to your heart? Uh, well, we went to Canada, Victoria Islands, and we did a, a festival over there, the Victoria Sky and Reggae Festival, and that was really amazing. Uh, the reception was really great, and the crowd was um, having a good time. Um, every show is really special. We just did a show in Mammoth. It wasn't a festival, but it was a show at the Vets Hall, and it was really great. And uh, it was special because it was the first time performing at that venue. And, uh, you know, there's always different people and some of the same people at the, at the events, but it's always special for me to meet people and to perform for the audience and engage the audience. And uh, it's really like a natural high to perform for, for different folks. And how has your music evolved from your first album to your latest projects? And what are new directions that you're exploring? Um, it's definitely improved a lot. I've improved a lot. Practice makes perfect. And um, I've come a long way. And uh, just pursuing it, persevering it, and being determined, and being positive, and um, exploring different, different genres. And I've been growing into myself. Um, being able to do my dad's music and be able to pretty much work on any music that I want to and make it acceptable by the fans and um, I, like I do a lot of crowd response so I incorporate the audience my show and my dad's show was not about him as an artist but it was more about the the the, the, the party goers and the, the, the attendees at the festival so that's what my show is about now that's what makes me special and kind of separates me from a lot of the other artists Rastafarian culture influence your music in and off stage? Um, well, His Majesty is, is the King of Kings and Bob Marley sing about the King of Kings, Burning Spear. All the Rastas in from Jamaica and around the world love His Majesty. His Majesty travel to Europe and Canada and America, Jamaica, Trinidad, all over the world to promote peace and love to the native, um, native people of all the lands in the world So, um, and to promote love. And um, well, that's a great influence on all of us, influence all the elders. And um, Marcus Garvey, the greatest prophet that ever lived, said, Look to the east for the crowning of the black king. And when we look to Ethiopia, we saw his majesty. So Ethiopia is our, our headquarters. And we look to Africa, we look to the continent for good communication and good examples and, and leadership. So give thanks and praise to his imperial majesty, Emperor Selassie the first chair. Rastafari, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Conquering Land, the Tribe of Judah, elect of Himself and Light of this world, ever living God. Ja! Rastafari, yes. And can you tell us about a particularly meaningful collaboration that you've done in the past and how you came about doing it? Um, I'm just, right now I'm just working on lots of collaborations and um, I'm working with RV Beats from Trinidad who's residing in Germany. Um, I'm working with um, um, Blessed son of brethren that um, resides in Uganda. I'm working with King Kanashi, who is from the Virgin Islands. Um, Kavaja, who's from Jamaica. Um, Bad Sparky. Um, so, he's another artist from Mozambique. So, with producers and artists, we're just, I'm spreading far and wide. And, and as well as at home. Um, Yero, our artist from the Bay Area, Yero, we're doing some collaborations now. So yeah, I'm working with DJs, producers, artists, you know, all kinds of collaborations right now because we have no limitations right now and we're all about love, so it's 
far out as we could share and, and, and work on good projects. That's what we're doing. And what impact do you think having your music featured in films and TV shows has reached to new audience? Uh, it's been amazing. Um, definitely, it's like having people hear your music um, kind of warms them up to your voice. And even though they don't even know, it's me a lot of the times because um, I'm not Junior Toots on a lot of the stuff that's in soundtracks or anything like that. I'm really Clayton Hibbert, which is my real name. My family name is Hibbert, so, you know, we have, uh, and some of the songs, some of the, you know, the titles have been changed, but over time I think people are going to make the connection and I'm grateful for the blessing to have so many people. I mean, my music is on Netflix. Um, Addicted to Life, um, Jimmy Kimmel Show, The Queen Latifah Show, um, Unfinished Business, um, Luke Cage, um, um, The Wannabes, and Unfinished Business. Yeah, many, many, many. Some I don't even know because sometimes people are. Um, yeah, I have, a, I have a, a licensing deal with Universal uh, Music Group, and they're based in the UK, so. I'm sure in the future my music is going to be coming um, out in a lot more um, projects and I'm also working on new music to, to possibly shop to them to, to do a new licensing agreement and, um, and, uh, and keep it going like that. And what are your goals for the next phase of your career and are there any upcoming projects, tours, anything you want to tell your fans? I'm going to the East Coast next month and I'm going to do some festivals out there and stuff like that trying to um, stay busy on the east and the west coast to spread my music and spread the love and spread the joy. Um, and I just want to tell everyone to stay busy doing good things, eating healthy, exercising, um, and staying as positive as possible. Surround yourself with good positive people and always think positive. Anytime you start thinking negative or evil, uh, you know, as far harmful towards anyone else, that you're, that's the definitely the wrong direction. So. You know, the way we become stronger is to is, is go through tests and temptations and, um, and that will, when we go through them positively, that's how you become stronger. When you take on a negative um, approach, it, it won't help you and it won't help anyone else and you might land yourself in a whole bunch of trouble, end up feeling sorry at the end of the day. So, you know what I mean? Uh, I, uh, I learned this throughout my life and, and from experience, you know, because I used to bare knuckle box and, and street fight all the time and, you know what I mean, over time I realized that, you know, even though I never lost a fight, <laughs> you know, I didn't want to be hurting people and even be arguing with people anymore. So, I, you know, I became a father and I wanted to be a good father. So I realized I had to like, you know, just get out of that street mentality and street fighting and that, that uh, young, um, immature uh, thought, thought process and, and, and acting, you know what I mean, and just kind of honing to what I want to be and to bring better results, you know what I mean, you have to be positive, positive things happen to positive people, negative things happen to negative people, you know what I mean? You ready? Well, thank you so much, man, for giving me this time. Yeah, thank bro. You. It was yes, great sir. meeting you. And thank you so much for what your family and you represent. Music course. Banging. I already find. <laughs>